All right, is Google Notebook LM everything that Gemini isn't? Is it actually an Evernote killer? I mean, Google itself kind of hinted at that in its own marketing video. Uh, so let's take a look at Google Notebook LM, an AI tool from Google that I might actually really like, right? And if you know me, I'm kind of hard on Google. All right, so let's take a look and let me remind y'all what this is. What's going on? My name's Jordan Wilson. I'm the host of Everyday AI. So we're a daily live stream podcast and free daily newsletter helping everyday people like you and me learn and leverage generative AI. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. Let me know what you want to see more of. But more importantly, go to youreverydayai.com and sign up for that free daily newsletter. All right, so let's take a look at Notebook LM. Now to access this, you can either Google it or just go to notebooklm.google.com. All right, so let's take a very high level overview of exactly what this is. So more or less, this is going to bring in what Google calls a personalized AI collaborator, grounded in information you trust and designed to help you do your best thinking. All right, that sounds cool, Google. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we did. So I saved uh, this page here, which is a very, very, very long, um, you know, so uh, we have our transcript every day. So I did a, a pretty long podcast on the seven steps on how to actually use ChatGPT in 2024. So I saved this as a PDF. And then I also saved this episode with Kelly Dowd from KPMG. So I saved these two pages as PDFs. And then I'm going to go ahead and import these into Notebook LM just for a quick demonstration. All right, so a notebook is essentially a collection of uh, different resources. So I'm going to go ahead and click new notebook, and I'm just going to call this test two. I did some very light testing right before this, but I haven't used notebook LM a lot. It was actually just released publicly uh, a little more than a week ago. All right, so let's start here. Something that Google actually does well. Yes, me being nice to Google. Uh, the UI and UX here is pretty simple, right? So you can click here to add a note. Um, and you can give this note a title. So I'm going to say um, note one. All right. And then I can just start talking. So I can start typing here about note one. All right. There we go. I click out and it's saved. All right. So I can do the same thing. Uh, so that's note one. So I can go in here. And this is note two. And then here is more information about note two. All right. Pretty simple stuff. All right, so you can use it like that. Copy and paste information, I think, is is really uh, really nice to do in there. But I think where uh, this is obviously the most useful is being able to add your sources. So essentially, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you something just with the notes. So I'm going to put in uh, another note here, and I'm going to say, I'm going to put something that we could actually ask Google. Um, so I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Google. Uh, I'm going to say Google. Uh, Google Notebook LM Marketing, all right? I'm going to say Google, I can't type when I do this live, seems to be going after Evernote with this new product, all right? So I'm going to go ahead, click out of that, and there we go. It's saved. I'm kind of zoomed in here so I don't see all the notes. Uh, I'm wondering, yeah, so you can select all or deselect all. Uh, which is nice. Uh, I, I wish Google also gave you the option to put these in list view. That's okay. So now I can start asking Google a question. All right. Well, it looks like I actually can't yet um, because I have to select all notes. So um, let's see. I can select one note at a time like this and then go chat with this note or I can uh, select all. So I'm going to select all and I'm going to say, who is Google going after? And we'll see if something as simple as that, because uh, I say Evernote right there. So we'll see. All right, so you'll see it's bringing up this kind of chat interface and it says Evernote. There we go. So you'll see right there, it's reading my notes. All right, so I'm gonna deselect all. And then I'm gonna add in uh, two sources. So the downside here, y'all, is, yeah, I gotta, I gotta kick it to you straight here. Uh, Gemini, right? So Gemini does not even have the ability to upload a PDF. Why? I don't know. Um, and you might say, oh, Jordan, you have to be on the paid version of Gemini. I am. I am on the enterprise version of Gemini. However, with workspace accounts, there are things that are not available that are available in free Gmail accounts. Um, so I have a paid enterprise version of Gemini with my work 
Google Workspace account. And I also have a paid version of Gemini, which on that side is called uh, Gemini Advanced, I believe. Uh, they've changed it three times in two and a half weeks. Um, so there's actually different features available uh, depending on if you have a Gmail account and you're paying versus if you have a Google Workspace account and you're paying. I have the enterprise account and still you don't have basic features and functionality. So let me show you what I mean. So in here, I go to settings. It says extensions coming soon. So not only are there no extensions, but I can't really connect to anything without extensions, right? Uh, so this is why I think Notebook LM might be a good uh, stopgap if you use a lot of Google products. However, if I go to add source and if I say drive, I cannot access this. It says access to Google Drive has been disabled for this account. Please contact your administrator. Guess what? It hasn't. Uh, I, I, I don't know for whatever reason. I guess you maybe have to work at Google to be able to understand how to uh, how to connect your Google Drive uh, to all these different uh, accounts. I've, I've looked, I've spent hours, doesn't work. Anyways, let's just go ahead and add a source. So I'm just going to add PDF here. I'm going to find two PDFs. All right, it looks like I can only upload one at a time. So let's upload these two PDFs. All right, I think I got that right. So there we go. We have our KPMG. And let's see if our second one can come in. It looks like it didn't upload. Oh, there it goes. Uh, as soon as I gave Google too much credit for UI UX, you can't see it uploading, but that's okay. All right, so now we have all of our sources there. So now I can click select all. Um, but it looks like it, unfortunately, when you click select all, it only does those for your notes. Interesting. All right. So over here, let's see if there's a way to select all. It doesn't look like it. I can add a source, but it looks like I have to click these individually. Uh, that's okay. So I'm going to click these and I'm going to say, uh, what are the seven steps on how to actually use ChatGPT? Uh, so this would be actually pretty impressive because I talk about it in the transcript of the podcast. So I'm going to say, what are the seven steps to using chat GPT in 2024. All right. So if Google Notebook LM is working correctly, it should find those seven steps and also it should source it. So um, let's see how it did here. It says here are the seven steps and then it says 10 citations. Wow. All right. So it says, uh, understand the power of chat GPT for business use, navigate the new chat GPT features, leverage the power of priming, prioritize ChatGPT plus for business use, secure data. Okay, so it kind of got it right, but it kind of didn't. So let's check these citations. So I'm gonna click one. Okay, so that is within the correct PDF. I'm gonna click two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, so here's maybe where we went wrong. When I click source 10, it actually went into this other, um, this other PDF, which we are talking about uh, ChatGPT. So interesting. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to go back into test two. And I'm just going to click this one. So I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to say, what are the seven steps for how to actually use ChatGPT in 2024? So we'll see if it can actually go through because I talk about a lot of things inside of ChatGPT uh, in this episode. So we'll see how many of them are actually correct. Uh, and again, it looks like we have 10 citations here. I'm going to click, go through and click them. So I like that you can click the citations. So it looks like it's just pulling uh, kind of seven random things. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So let's see. I just want to make sure it's not pulling anything else up from the other source that we don't have checked. And it's not. So let's see if it got it right here. So understand the power. Not really. Navigate the new features, yes. Leverage the power of priming, yes. Prioritize ChatGPT Plus for business use, not really. Secure data and respecting user privacy, that wasn't one of the steps. Embrace ChatGPT, not one of the steps. Embrace tra transparency, not one of the steps. So uh, this actually didn't do a good job, um, which is surprising. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Uh, I'm going to say incorrect. Uh, all right, looks like I'm going to say fail to answer. All right, so let's see if I can try this one more time. And I'm going to say, according to the transcript of this PDF. So we'll see if I add a little bit more uh, information. We'll see if it does a little bit better job. It looks like it's not going to. Um, you know what? I'm actually not too bummed at Google for this uh, because this is actually a very long podcast. Uh, there's thousands of words uh, in here. So uh, same thing, it doesn't get it exactly right. But however, it doesn't make anything up, right? Which is important. Uh, 
you know, all of this is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to click out of here. I'm going to click this KPMG one, and I'm going to say, summarize the conversation with Kelly Dowd. All right, I'm going to say nothing else. I have this clicked, and we'll see if it does a pretty good job of summarizing the conversation. All right, interesting. So it is saying there is no mention of her in the provided sources. Uh, so there are, uh, there is. So what's interesting here is it's still giving me sources, right? Uh, but we're we're clearly talking about uh, Kelly Dowd here, right? So here is our here's our uh, page that we uh, downloaded, and here we go. We're talking about Kelly Dowd, and all of these are labeled as well. So this is all in the PDF. So I'm actually surprised. I thought uh, I thought that. Um, uh, Notebook LM was going to handle this, but apparently it didn't. So I'm going to try one more time. I'm going to say summarize this document focusing on um, the main points. So maybe me mentioning the name of the guest in there, even though it is in the um, it is in the document, uh, tripped it up for some reason. All right, so let's see if this did a better job. All right, so here we go. It says the key uh, the key to balancing AI innovation and ethics is effective government. To achieve this. Foster partnerships, respect consumer privacy, adopt. Okay, so did an okay job. That's not necessarily what we talked about overall. So now I'm going to ask a specific question. I'm going to say what uh, brands or use cases were talked about in this document. All right, so now I'm asking something uh, specific. And there was uh, three different brands uh, or use cases that were specifically talked about in here. All right, so... All right. Unfortunately, it says the document does not mention any specific brands or use cases. All right. So, uh, and then we see the citations here are a little random, right? So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say uh, failed to answer. And we're going to try this again. To see if we get a better, better response, right? Uh, so who knows? Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Google's struggling here um to read this longer document i'm not sure but here again it says this document does not mention any specific brands or use cases which is wrong right uh so let's actually um let's actually show this so let's see it was you know what i'm going to use this is going to be fun i'm going to use this exact same kind of prompt that we just used here okay I'm going to use a random Chrome extension. All right. So I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully you should be able to see this. This is called Voila. So I'm going to I'm going to run the same thing. And I'm going to see if a, a Chrome extension, which should not be as good as Google Google's product, uh, can, can handle this question a little better. So I'm going to say in this page, because uh, it's a little different. We didn't upload it. It's actually reading the page. So let's see if, if it does a good job. All right. So look at that. Um, this is all correct. These are all different brands and use cases that we talked about in this. Uh, the one I was actually looking for was uh, Sephora, um, which is interesting. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to lob Google LM up a softball. So not only did it fail uh, to get that, we'll see if it can get it when I actually call out the brand name. So I'm going to say, what did Kelly talk about um, when he referenced Sephora? All right. I hope Google LM gets this or Notebook LM gets this. If not, I am just, oh, oh, terrible. All right. So it says, I'm sorry, but the provided text does not contain any information about Kelly referencing Sephora. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, I'll just say what was said about Sephora. Let's try one more time. Says the provided text is not mentioned for us, so maybe it's because I'm in that kind of zoomed-in view. I'm not sure why. Let's let's try it again. I'm going to say what was said about Sephora, and again, I only have uh, that document selected. Maybe it was because I was in that zoomed-in view. I'm not sure. Let's try again. It says the provided text does not mention Sephora, and that is a Bummer, because it definitely does. Unless the only thing I can think of here is it looks like maybe it's not bringing in the whole article. I'm not sure. But unfortunately, 
once again, I had high hopes for this new product, Notebook LM. And right now, it failed. It failed, at least in very limited testing. Hey, Google, I thought I was personally super excited to use this. Uh, right now, it just doesn't, doesn't hold. Doesn't hold. Not good right now. All right. Uh, well, that's why we do these live, y'all, so you can see the results. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have a better uh, result with Notebook LM, but please go to youreverydayai.com, sign up for the free daily newsletter, and we'll see you back for another AI in 5. Thanks, y'all.